Yeah, so I mean, bu I, it's less in a protest situation, right? Because like, there's usually not bullets flying, but um, you always want to, if you're ever getting shot at, ducking behind like the, the wheel well is always the safest spot in a car. Uh, and it sa has saved my life in the past. My name is Jengis Yar. I'm a documentary photographer. I've covered situations of unrest all over the world, um, including wars in Syria and Iraq, um, and I've covered protests in places like Bangkok, but also Black Lives Matter movements in Baltimore, Minneapolis, and now even here in Texas. Every photographer has their own reason for being out photographing protests. Personally, I want to be able to provide a clear and accurate representation of what I've, I saw and what happened to the people that I've met. So one of the most important things you can do before going out to a protest is actually planning for what might happen at a protest. How have police or protesters reacted towards press in the past? Have there been you know, any incidences of extreme violence and how, how have those escalated? You're also going to want to check simple things like the weather. Photographing a protest will often take hours of your time and you'll often be out in the environment all day. Um, quite often you're in a place with little shade, exposed to, the, uh, exposed to the elements, so I like to bring the essentials that I would normally bring on a long hike. When people think about documenting protests, often they think about the most extreme parts of the protest that they need to worry about, be it you know tear gas or violence, uh, but often it's the simple things like drinking water that are actually going to keep you the safest. This goes into line with a lot of the things people associate with war. Often people are thinking about bombs and you know bullets as being the most extreme elements and the things you need to worry about the most, but actually it's things like buckling your seatbelt that are gonna keep you the safest in environments like that. I always carry a medical kit with me when I'm documenting you know, conflict or, or war zones, but in the event of protests, because we're often so close to hospitals, I don't have it with me. What I always do carry with me though are tourniquets. Stopping blood loss is one of the most important ways to save somebody's life. So just having two small little tourniquets on me um, and knowing how to use them could be the difference between life or death. So another thing you can do to help keep you a little bit safer is establish a check-in check -in routine with somebody who's not at the protests. That, you know, that could be a partner back home or a friend who's just monitoring the situation from, from afar. And you should also establish some sort of protocol for the event that you miss a check-in. What are they gonna do? Who are they gonna call? Cell phones are also a great tool for this. So you can turn on location sharing or use apps that help you with that for your partner to see exactly where you are. So if they see that you're in a police station for an extended amount of time, they can probably assume that you've been arrested. So the other thing you should be thinking about is what type of safety equipment you might be bringing with you. I often keep my kit really simple for protests and pack uh, a simple you know, bike helmet or skateboard helmet, um, a good mask, and then some ballistic glasses to keep my eyes safe. One of the things we've seen most frequently used uh, is tear gas at protests. And one of the ways that you can stay safe is when you see you know, police putting on their, their tear gas equipment, that that's a good time for you to either leave the environment because you don't have the proper equipment or to put your own, you know, your own mask and your own goggles on. So if you do find yourself in a situation of confrontation, be it with you know, law enforcement, or protesters, my suggestion would be to try to de-escalate it or escape. You know, lots of people might disagree with me on this, but you're not there to be part of these, these situations, you're just there to document it. So if anything arises where somebody has a problem with you as a person or you know, with the job you're doing, try to de-escalate the situation, calm the situation down. And my final point is to try to decompress after all these events have happened. It's important for you to reflect on the events that you've seen or documented. And I often do this through something like a diary or an audio journal. I often find that after documenting, you know, really intense situations, just calling up a buddy or a friend that is, you know, in a similar line of work, just calling and talking with them over, you know, over what I went through that day, just having like another, you know, another person to bounce those ideas and those those memories off with uh, can be really useful and soothing and helps me decompress in my own way. So now you have some tips that might help keep you a little bit safer. Go out there, keep photographing, and keep documenting history. <laughs>